All right, how's it going? I'm that ginger photographer. This video is gonna be all about photographing your first wedding. And this video specifically is part two, and it's gonna be about what to do from when you get at the wedding, when you arrive there, up until the speeches and the meal. If you didn't see the last video, part one, I'll leave a link in the comments. But that was all about what to do before the wedding from contracts, deposits, invoices, everything like that is covered in the first video, part one of this series. So I've been photographing weddings for over 12 years now, and this is just stuff that I've learned along the way stuff that make the day go a lot smoother, a lot easier. Other people might do things differently and that's totally okay. This is just what works for me. I don't control the day too much. I don't take over the day too much. I keep the photography really relaxed and simple and it's not a case of directing people all day, making people smile for the camera all day. There's none of that. This workflow will only really apply if that's the kind of route of photography that you want to do. Kind of relaxed, fun, nice photography. I think that's a good enough intro and I'll just get straight into it. This is from the moment you get there. So when you arrive at the venue, if whoever you're photographing, whether it's the bride or the groom getting ready, I go and introduce myself. So I don't just get my camera out and start taking pictures straight away. As soon as I arrive there, I go and I find them and I let them know that I'm there. I don't get my camera out straight away because I wouldn't want to put them like under pressure straight away, kicking the door in and putting my camera straight in the face, taking loads of pictures. So I don't do that straight away. I go in, I say hi, I say hi to everybody that's there that's getting ready with them. I'll maybe sit down and then I'll start getting my camera camera out, I'll start getting it ready while talking to them. I don't just whip it out the bag and start taking pictures because that's just uncomfortable and I couldn't think of anything worse to happen to me than someone I don't really know just coming in the room and taking pictures of me. So I start talking to them, get them comfortable and then I get the camera out, doing test shots, get my lighting ready. So they're slowly getting used to it basically. They're slowly getting used to the camera being there. They've got time to like touch up if they want to touch up while I'm getting the camera ready and it just makes them a lot more comfortable and relaxed around it as well. Especially by talking to them and introducing yourself and talking to the bridal party or the lads with the groom's party, whoever it is, they're a bit more relaxed and comfortable around you because you've made that effort to talk to them for a bit, basically. You're not just hiding behind the camera straight away. So that is the first piece of advice I'd give is as soon as you get there, go and introduce yourself, say hi, and just slowly start getting your camera out. Relax, you've got all day. You've got all day to do this. I just want to say there's no cap today either because I'm just embracing this lockdown hair now. It's just getting ridiculous. <laughs> So the next thing I do, once I've introduced myself, I've said hi, I've got done a couple of test shots, I'll take a couple of pictures in the room while they're getting ready as well, but I won't just spend the whole time there. I'll maybe spend five, 10 minutes with them at first, and then, I'll go and get some detail shots. So if they're getting ready at a venue, I'll go and get pictures of the venue before guests arrive, before anyone's there. If the rooms are set up, if the table decorations are done, I'll go and photograph them now as well. Rather than just spending all this time with the bride or the groom and the parties, I'll go down, get pictures before, basically before all the guests come in and trash it, I'll get pictures now while it's all nice and there's nobody in it. And that just adds to the story of the day. When I deliver the pictures, it's like a full story of the day, so it does include detail pictures, it includes pictures of the venue. It doesn't always have to be pictures of just guests or just people doing things. So it might be the view from out the window, it might be pictures of the venue, it might be pictures of the ceremony room, whatever it is, I'll get all that now. If they're getting ready at home or if they're getting ready at a parent's house, I'll do the same thing. People will be hanging out in different rooms, so I'll go from room to room to room. I won't just stay with the bridal party and not move from that room. I'll go to all the different rooms and get detail shots in those, get people talking, things like that. So just use that time, use like 20 minutes, half an hour, keep on popping up to see the bride or the groom, or if they're both getting ready at the same venue, then do that, pop between rooms, do the ceremony room, go to the groom, go and get pictures of the venue, go to the bride. You can really mix it up and use your time wisely. You don't have to just sit in that room and get 500 pictures of someone getting the hair done because you'll only end up delivering about five of them. Even if you think you might not even use them, when you come to actually deliver the images, you might look at that and think, oh, that's a great picture of a bread bowl. I don't know. But you might think it's a great picture of a bed, but bread. <laughs> but you might think it's a great picture and you might end up delivering it. That's my point. Just get pictures of everything while you're there before 100 guests come up and ruin it. <laughs> So as the groom starts to get ready, or the grooms, I'll get pictures of them putting the tie on, the suits if they're wearing suits, the pocket squares, flowers, what's them called again? What are they called? What's them flowers called? Buttonhole, 
I'll get pictures of them getting the buttonholes on, things like that. If the bride's starting to get ready, I'll go up. I'll get pictures of her getting her makeup finished, her hair done, things like that. I'll leave while she's getting the dress on and I'll just ask them to wait if it's getting buttoned up at the back, if they can just wait for me to get back before doing that so I can get pictures of that actually being done rather than having to pretend to get it done. I'd rather have pictures of it really being done. So I just ask them to hold on. That's all I ask them to hold on for. Everything else they can do at their own pace when they want to do it but I just ask them to wait for me for those pictures of things like the buttons on the back of the dress or the shoes being put on. I think it's much better to get them naturally and as it's actually happened because there's always laughs, there's always people can't do the buttons so people are laughing, sometimes they're stressed, sometimes they're laughing. So it's better to get those pictures really than try and recreate it. They'll look at the pictures and know that it was really being done basically. They'll be looking at the pictures and think oh why are we laughing there again? Oh it's because you couldn't get my foot in the shoe, something like that. So yeah, know what you want to control on the day, know what you want pictures of and make them aware of that. If you know you want pictures of the bride getting lipstick on or maybe mascara, make sure you're there for that or ask the makeup artist when she'll be doing that so you know to be back for that so you don't miss it or ask her to wait for you until she puts that on. So just know what you want photographs of and just make them aware with it. Another great thing to do when you jump in between rooms, if you jump in between rooms or if you're jumping from the ceremony room to the bridal room, whatever it is, when you go in between areas, when guests start to arrive, those are great pictures as well. So when the guests start to arrive pulling up in cars in minibuses whatever it is and they're starting to arrive maybe they're having welcome drinks get pictures of those guys as well because everybody looks dapper nobody's drunk yet you hope anyway no you hope nobody's wrecked yet everybody's looking the best at this point so it's great it's a great time to get people arriving family haven't seen each other for ages so they're all hugging and embracing so it's a really good time to get pictures of guests arriving if you've got a groom or somebody who's greeting the guests even better because he's got his granny coming up his parents so that's a really good time to be popping down getting pictures of that and then going back up to see the bride oh what's she doing now she's getting her makeup on i'll pop back down i need to be back in 10 minutes for the fastening of the dress so you've got that time and just work it out like that just keep running between the two it's a long day it's a hard working day people think all you do is press the button on the camera but there's more to it in that you've got to be in all these places at once another scenario is the bride might be getting ready at a separate place or she might not be getting ready at the venue she might be getting ready at say her parents home so in that case what i'd do is you can't really get the guests arriving and if you're not using a second photographer what I would do there is I'll stick with them. If they're getting a car to take them to the venue, I'll wait till the car arrives. I'll get pictures of them getting in the car and then I will try my best to set off in my car before them to get to the venue. The only reason for that is I just really like getting pictures of the bride or the groom arriving at the venue so I will try and get there before them. If that means flooring it past them on a country road and I need to bomb it past them to get the venue before them then I'll do that. Unless the police are watching then I never do that but I just try and get there before them and get them arriving, get the car coming down the track, down the path, whatever it is. So it's a great idea if they're getting ready elsewhere do that get pictures of them getting in the car leave before them if you can or beat them there if you can and then get pictures of them arriving and getting out the car and then at that point when they've arrived they'll have to go and see the registrar so you've got time at this point to go and see the bride or groom who's waiting the guests that have arrived they're probably seated by this point so you can get pictures of them sat down just because they're talking to the registrar off in another room you don't have to be stood doing nothing you can go and interact with everybody else get pictures of everybody else wherever they are so something I need to stress at this point is the staff at the venue are your friend. They are your best friend on this day and they can give you all the information you need to know. They can give you timings. If there's any drama or if there's any gossip, they always know who's drunk first. So speak to the staff, see what's happening, ask them how it's going, see if any plans have changed. The staff will know all these things. So go and speak to the staff and they'll be your best friend for the day as well. And if you're nice to them, they'll feed you and give you drinks. So make friends with the staff, that is like a really good tip that. The next thing to do is if you've got pictures, if they're in the ceremony waiting, is as soon as that other party's finished speaking to the registrars, 
you need to go and speak to them, ask them where you can stand, ask them what they're okay with. They'll probably tell you don't use flash all the way during the ceremony, which is just to be expected really. You can't be just using a flash in someone's face for a hundred photos. So they'll probably tell you no flash. They'll tell you that you can't take photos of the sign and of the registrar, but they'll probably do a mock-up afterwards. Most registrars, really cool. They'll let you do what you want. They'll let you stand where you want. They just, just don't take the piss out of them basically. Don't be annoying during the day. Don't be moving around loads. Don't be like getting in there with them. Don't be blocking other people's view of the wedding. That's what they've come to see. They don't want to look at the back of your head. Registrars are pretty cool if you're cool with them. So at this point, we're going to assume that the guests have all been seated, either a bride or a groom, if it's two brides getting married, if it's two grooms, either a bride or a groom is going to be at the front of the aisle waiting for the other one to arrive. And at this point, what I'll do is I'll go and find the other party and I'll go and get photos of them. They'll probably be nervous. They'll be doing last minute touches. If it's bridesmaids, they'll be straightening themselves up, getting the flowers ready, things like that ready to come down the aisle for the wedding. So I'll go and get some quick pictures of them and then I'll go down the aisle before them just because I like the attention, but also because you don't want to be coming into the wedding afterwards because that's just like poor performance and they'll close the doors on you and then you'll be trapped outside the wedding. But I'll go down the aisle before them. I get some pictures from the front. Bride or groom, whoever's waiting at the front are probably really nervous. They'll be looking down, they'll be nervous. They might have the best man there. So I'll be getting pictures of those looking nervous. Then as the bride, we're going to assume it's a bride, comes down the aisle, get pictures of the bride coming down the aisle, the bridesmaids coming down the aisle, mix it up between the two, get guests looking, get a wide shot of everybody. It's great to have two cameras at this point or it's great to have a lens that can go a wide to zoom 24 to 70 great example of that but get pictures of them coming down the aisle and then just get your standard ceremony pictures try not to annoy the registrars try not to annoy the guests by moving about too much try not to make any noise if you've got creaky knees like me try not to kneel down too much because that is loud in a quiet room i don't need to go through a photograph list of what you need to get but just obviously you've got the exchanging of vows you've got the first kiss you've got the exchanging of rings if you need a list of photographs to take look one up but you don't you're there you're there and it's in front of you just photograph everything that's happening you don't need to work off a list when it's all happening right there in front of you just don't annoy registrars don't move about too much move around and get different angles that's fine the registrars are normally okay with that or the vicar whoever it is but don't be like getting your 10,000 steps in during the wedding ceremony so they get to a point where they've had the first kiss and then what will happen now is they'll go and sign the registrar. So at this point, I'll go to the back of the room. So I'll get a wide shot of the room because you'll have people chatting. After that, you'll probably get called down the front to do a fake one where they'll set one up. So get some quick pictures of that if they want to. And then back to the back of the room. This is like the wedding over at this point. The ceremony's done. It's official. They're married. It's great. But you don't need to be at the front anymore because they're going to be exiting now. <music> So if you go and stand at the back of the aisle, they're going to be coming towards you, they're going to be exiting towards you, bride and groom at the front, or bride and bride, groom and groom, they're going to be exiting towards you with the bridal party behind them, parents behind them, whoever it is, they're all going to be coming towards you and you love the attention, they're all coming at you. So stand right in the middle of the aisle, get loads of pictures, walk right down in front of them if you want, get some really quick ones, get some wide ones, get guests, Ch -ch -ch -ch. guest, 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 move back. Get some of them coming down and then stand to the side, let them pass. Don't block the exit. Amateur, rookie mistake. So stand to one side, get the pictures of them exiting. You don't have to get pictures of everybody in there exiting. I usually wait till like the bridesmaids have gone, the groomsmen have gone, the parents have gone, then I sneak into the line and I exit with them because out there there's gonna be canapes and drinks and things like that. So you don't wanna be you don't wanna be missing the canapes, but you also don't wanna be missing the photographs of them having a drink, saying congratulations to parents, grandparents, everybody saying congratulations to them. So get out there, don't get stuck at the back of the queue. It's happened to me a few times, but then I remember Oh, I'm the photographer. I don't need to stand in this queue. So just like push past everyone. Let them know you're there. Tell them. Just hold your camera up. Just walk through. Larry! Impractical jokers. Anybody watch it? So two things could happen now. They might have got married at a church and now they're going to the venue. Or they've got married at the venue and they're staying at the venue. So either way, it kind of runs the same. If they're going to do confetti, they're probably going to do it now. Some venues will take control of this for you and they will line everybody up and they'll hand the confetti out for you. 
other venues or churches for instance don't want anything to do with it you've paid your money you're married get off my land but whatever it is make sure that you control it and if they're doing confetti now whether at the venue or whether at the church wherever it is get people in two lines basically with enough room the, the bride and groom or the bride and bride or the groom and groom can come down the middle of it side by side they don't want to be walking in front of each other and just looks terrible but get them coming down the center of two lines of people everybody with confetti and you just want to tell everybody to just throw it in the air don't throw it in the face throw it in the air and then it'll just absolutely cover them more confetti the better basically rather than rather than having everybody circle round them I was very fixated on my hand there, but rather than having everybody circle round them and them just stand there and get covered in confetti and not know what to do, them walking through everybody is giving them something to do. So you'll get loads of woo, yeah, woo, as they walk past everybody. And you can be right near them walking backwards, photographing them, wide shots work great for this. Or if you want to, if you're not comfortable walking backwards, just stand at the end of the two lines or halfway up the two lines, get pictures, run at the back, Personally, I stand right in front of them, right in the face, and just walk backwards as they're walking. Now, if they're at the church and they're going to the venue, just let them head off after that. If they're hanging about for a bit there and they want to do group shots there, do group shots there. Remember in the last video where we learned how to make the group shots run smoothly? Do that. If they just want to head off to the venue now, go and get in your car, go when they go. But if you want to get pictures of them getting in the car, do that. But as I said before, I prefer pictures of them arriving rather than pictures of them leaving. So I'll get to the venue before them once again. I'll go down, get the venue before them and get them arriving and also get guests arriving again. If they've got married at the venue and they've come out the ceremony room, they've done the confetti, I just let them chill out now. I'm not gonna take them away for pictures straight away. When you've got guests wanting to say congratulations, you've got bridesmaids wanting to hug them, you've got grandparents and uncles that they haven't seen in years wanting to come and say hi, congratulations to them. The last thing I'm gonna do is go and take them away for pictures for half an hour. So if they're having canapes, if they're having drinks now, I just let them do that. If they're not eating or doing speeches for the next two hours, I'll let them chill out for about 50 minutes. I just think it's their day, it's their wedding day. They want to have fun, they want to talk to guests. They've paid £70 a head for some of these people. So the last thing they want to do is not talk to them. So I let them just chill out on the day, have fun. So I go and get pictures of the room where they're having the meal. I'll get pictures of the venue. I'll get loads of pictures of guests laughing and talking outside or inside at the bar. I'll just get pictures of the kids playing, things like that. So just let them chill out. Do not drag them off the pictures straight away unless you're really pressed for time. If you have not got much time, then you might have to do it, but just let them chill out for a bit. They do not want to remember their wedding day as being just a photo shoot, basically. They do not want to spend two hours getting photos done rather than talking to family and friends. So give them 50 minutes, give them an hour, and then approach the subject. <laughs> You've learned in the last video, remember? I'm just trying to get you to watch the last video if you haven't seen it. But on our group shot list, we know how long the group shots are gonna take, so we can factor that into when to do them before the meal and the speeches start. So we can start those about an hour before the speeches. We'll get the group shots done, we'll get the family pictures done, and then we'll go and get pictures with the bride and groom. And what I would say about the group shot pictures while you're doing those is, don't worry about the bridal pictures of the bridesmaids and the groomsmen and the best man. We know they're needed, and I think it's nice to do them in a different location. If you do all your family and friends ones in one spot and then your groomsmen and your bridesmaids are usually up for a bit more so you can pose them a little bit differently. You can go and make them stand on hay bales if you want, take them into a barn, take them to the woods if you want to take them to the woods. But you can't drag your 90 year old granny to the woods but you can take your 30 year old groomsmen. <laughs> So what I do at this point, depending where we are, a lot of my weddings are in the countryside. I will drag them through a field, I'll take them at the woods, we'll get in my car and we'll drive to the beach. Whatever it is, we'll get some lovely pictures at a different location if they want to. I'm not gonna make them, but I strongly suggest that we go somewhere nice for pictures rather than just pictures in front of the venue. Remember I said earlier, speak to the staff, they can point you in the direction of the beach is only 10 minutes away. There's a nice forest over there. So whatever it takes, 
We usually jump in my car. I'd say 90% of weddings, we jump in my car and we head somewhere for pictures. If you've got a venue which is situated in a lovely wooded area or it's at the beach, you don't really need to go far. And there's two points that I'm gonna talk about. One will be in the next video, but I do pictures on an evening and I do pictures on the daytime because you've got different light. So maybe the daytime pictures will be at the venue when we're pushed for time. And then on an evening, we might jump in my car and go at the beach and get sunset pictures at the beach. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it'll be dark by the time the evening comes. So we'll jump in my car on the afternoon. We'll go to the woods. We'll get some pictures while it's still light out and the woods are still light. We'll get pictures of them just walking through. And again, I just try and keep these really relaxed, really simple, really nice, just not looking at the camera all the time, not just smiling for the camera. I get them talking to each other, walking, holding hands, cuddling, barely ever ask them to look at the camera in all honesty. I think the relaxed are much better pictures than the posy pictures. And I think that's why the couples that I have book me is because it's for the more relaxed photography because not everybody is a model. Not everybody likes having a camera in the face. I mean, I've had one in my face now for 40 minutes here and it kind of gets weird. But yeah, you'll know your couple if your couple have booked you on the basis that you do loads of posy pictures do the posy pictures that they're expecting but with me and my approach to photography it's really relaxed and i don't take over the day too much and i don't drag them off for pictures for too long either if it's 10 minutes to the beach spend 15 minutes at the beach 10 minutes back that is 35 minutes, half an hour, it's not too long. 20 minutes of that is in the car, remember? So you're only really having 15 minutes of pictures. So again, I'm not gonna go through a list of photographs that you need to take and what you should get. You'll know what you want to get and you'll know looking at the people's work, the style of photography that you like. So do that and get that style of photography that you enjoy, but don't drag them off for too long. And also don't drag them off straight away either. <laughs> So once you've done that and all the guests are seated and they've ruined all the place settings and they've put bottles everywhere and drinks everywhere. So that's why we get pictures of the room earlier on while they're having canapes. That's why it's a good idea to go and get the details shots before they trash the room. And then if they're getting announced, just stand in a spot where you can see them being announced. Be aware that everybody's gonna stand up to clap. So make sure you've got a clear line of sight. Make sure that it's gonna be clear when everybody stands up that you're not gonna be suddenly trapped and blocked at the back of the room. If that means standing in front of the door, stand in front of the door to get them being announced. But when they get announced in, get pictures of them coming in, but turn around and get pictures of people clapping as well and cheering and hollering. So we're gonna assume now that speeches are before the meal and just basically, if you want to use flash, off-camera flash, you should have set that up earlier. Don't set it up now. Too distracting. People will be watching you. They'll be more interested in what you're doing than what the groom has to say. So have that all set up earlier on. But get yourself in a nice spot. Have a wide lens and a zoom lens. So use them to get wide pictures of the room, of maybe the groom giving his speech, stood at the front with everybody watching. Great picture. Use the zoom to get close-ups of people giving speeches. But also make sure you get lots of candid pictures of guests listening to the speech, of parents telling the kids to shut up, make sure you get pictures of people laughing, stand at the front if you want. Personally, what I will do during the speeches is I will go and stand behind the top table. So while the, say the groom again, is giving a speech, I'll be stood behind him. I think that's a great picture of him stood facing his entire crowd. So mix it up, move around. You've got no limitations of where you can move around in there. There's no distracting really. The most distracting will probably be your flash if you're using it. But just get loads of pictures of the speeches. Again, you don't need to take 400 pictures during the speeches. You could take 20 good pictures of each person that gives a speech. The rest of them could be candid. You're not gonna want to deliver 80 pictures of speeches. Nobody wants to look through them. Nobody cares that much. But get lots of candid ones. Get lots of people watching the speeches. The bride crying. The groom crying. The best man crying. Whoever's crying. You might be crying. Get a picture of yourself crying. And then after the speeches are done, if they're then having the meal, go chill out. If they have the meal first, go chill out. Have a break. Go and eat your hula hoops in your car. From part one of this video series, you'll know from your booking form whether you're getting fed or not or whether you need to bring a cheese sandwich yourself. Whichever it is, go to the car, have a break, keep hydrated, that is a massive tip that. You will feel hungover the next day, no doubt about it. Keep hydrated during the day, the next day you will feel hungover. Use your time to back up the cards if you wanna do that. If you don't wanna back up the cards, if you just wanna chill out, chill out. Do whatever you need to do. I usually speak to the staff at this point and ask when they're turning the room around, 
where guests will go while they're turning the room around, what will be happening in the night, everything like that. I'll just talk to the staff about at this point. And that is the end of this part of the video because I'm gonna do the evening reception in a separate video because I can already tell that this video is long as so the wedding photos for an evening they'll be in part three of this video series so i'm going to finish it here i hope you enjoyed that i hope you took something away from that because as i say this is just stuff that i've learned throughout the years from doing this and i think this works really well and it just keeps it really smooth and really relaxed yeah you've got to be in lots of places at once but it's better to have a plan for doing that than have no plan and try and do it. So I'll be putting part three up next week and that'll be about the evening photos and then part four will be about after the wedding, backing up cards, delivering images, how to deliver images, prints, everything like that. So if you're not subscribed already, what are you doing? What are you playing at? Subscribe now. Like this video if you learned something and I will love you forever. If you've got any questions or if there's anything you think I didn't cover in this video, in this part of the wedding, leave it in the comments and I'll either answer it on there or I'll answer it in the next video. I'll give you a shout out. How about that? I'll give you a shout out. Again, thank you so much for watching. Almost at 100 subscribers. I love you all. Thank you so much. See you next time. Love you. Bye.